Hi, uh, welcome to APG Patshala. Uh, I'm Shubhada Moitra. I'm with the School of Social Work at the Center for Health and Mental Health, Tata Institute of Social Sciences. We are going to be looking at the module on play and experiential methodologies of working with children as part of a paper on mental health. Uh, with me, I have a colleague who is going to demonstrate a play session. Uh, I have Gayatri, uh, who is a senior psychiatric social worker with the Field Action Project of ours called Mutska. Uh, what are the objectives of this module on play and experiential methodologies? We expect that after reading and going through the presentation, you will be able to understand the theoretical, methodological and practical information about play and experiential methodologies of working with children. You will also be able to understand the value of play in children's life, be able to distinguish the play of children who are well adjusted and those who have some mental health problems. You will also be able to appreciate the use of play and related forms in developmental and therapeutic settings. For the next half an hour, we are going to demonstrate a play session with a six-year-old. The module would not have meaning if we didn't know how to play around with children. Uh, so here it is. Uh, I am going to play the therapist uh, or a facilitator and Gayatri will be a six-year-old child. So we start the play session. What we are going to demonstrate is Teddy bear's picnic. Teddy bear's out on a picnic. Hope you enjoy the session. Hi Gayatri. Hello. Welcome to our center. Thank you. Um, so, are you enjoying yourself? Yeah. I am. What are you looking forward to? I would like to maybe play. Okay. So, I have a teddy bear here. Oh, wow. I like this. I like you teddy do? bears. You know yeah. what? Looks like this teddy bear can like would like to jump. Sure. And roll, you know. Yes. See? And what is it doing? Oh, it's looking for more friends. Aha. Uh -huh. In a while perhaps. Okay. The teddy bear will have more friends. Okay. So you know Gayatri, we are going to make up stories okay. around this little teddy bear. Would you like to do that? Along with teddy bears, do you also like stories? Yes, I like stories. Alright, so we are going to do stories around the teddy bear. Okay. Yeah? Yes. Okay. So, I have... This teddy bear is playing around in the garden. You see these lovely trees? Yeah. And what is hey. the teddy bear doing? It wants to climb the trees, you know. Mm -hmm. It's trying to jump. Okay. Hey. And what is the teddy bear saying? Hey, there is something on the tree. I would like to take it. And what do you think this is? Oh, there's something over there. And the teddy bear. This part doesn't sit. But we are going to try it the other part. Okay. Yes. Oh, wow. I can see There something. is a pot of honey on the tree. And as the teddy bear is playing, the teddy bear suddenly spots the pot of honey. Yes. What do you think the teddy bear does? The teddy bear would like to jump. It's jumping. Mm -hmm. And what and happens next? It tries to shake the tree, you know. Oh, oh. And the pot the falls. falls. Okay. So but here is the pot of honey. It falls. Mm -hmm. And what happens next? Hey, the teddy bear is so happy. It wants to eat. Yum, 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 yum. You know? Okay. It's so tasty and it feels so happy. Okay, so the teddy bear eats looks, the honey? Yes, but it still looks for more. Uh-huh. Ah, there is some more left in the spot. Let me right? see. Right? Yes. Yum, mm -hmm. yum, yum, yum. Yes, it's so tasty. So I'm so happy. And ah. what happens next? What does the teddy bear say after eating the honey? Oh, I feel so nice and full. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should now look for more play. I'm ready to play more. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So now, after the teddy bear has eaten the honey, 
we are going to make up a longer story. Okay. All right. Okay. This is about teddy bear going out on a picnic. Okay. 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 And who does teddy bear go out on a picnic? Here are some other bears. Okay. And would you like to name these bears? Would you like to say who these bears are? This is our little teddy bear. What would you like to call this bear? I will call it Mini. Mini? Yes. Okay. So Mini bear, Mini has other bears. Who are these bears? Mm, this looks like, this is Papa bear, you know. Papa bear. And this is Mama bear. Okay, this is Mama bear. And this is Bunty. Bunty. Yeah. Bunty. Alright. So, Teddy Bear goes on a picnic. Okay. With Papa Bear, Bunty. Okay. And Mini. Right. Yeah. Mini. No, sorry. Mama Bear, Papa Bear, Bunty and Mini go on a picnic. Okay. Right. Alright. They go and... Papa Bear and Mama Bear are setting up the picnic. Okay. Alright. And Teddy Bear is playing with, Mini is playing with Bunty. Yes. Yeah. Here is Mama Bear and Papa Bear setting up the picnic. Yeah. Yeah. And Okay, so let's take. Wow, that's a nice bunty here. Yeah, yes. I like it. So Minnie is playing with the car here, a cart. Minnie is pulling the cart. Yes. Yeah. And suddenly Minnie hears a squirrel near the trees. Okay. And Minnie comes to see what this okay. noise is about. Okay. And when Minnie comes back, she sees Bunty playing with her cart. What do you think Minnie does? Minnie is a little sad mm -hmm. and tells Bunty, hello, mm -hmm. I was playing with this. Please mm -hmm. move. Mm -hmm. I was playing with this. Mm -hmm. Minnie says, no, no, I want to play, I want to play, but... But it's it's my my car. I want to play with this. It's my truck. I want to play. Mm -hmm. And then both of them start fighting. Mm -hmm. Just fighting. What are they and saying to each other? It's mine. Stop! Stop! It's mine. I Mini is saying yes to Bunty. Yes. Yeah. Then Bunty says, "Let me play for some time. Now I'm not going to give you." Mm -hmm. Then Bunty says, "Move! I'm going to tell Papa." Mm. So Bunty comes back yeah. and Minnie begins to play with the cart. Yes. Yeah. So Minnie continues. Minnie is crying loudly. Bunty. Minnie is crying or Bunty is crying? Bunty is crying loudly. Bunty is crying. Minnie is not bothered. Minnie is not bothered. Okay. And Minnie continues to play with the cart. Yes. And just as Minnie is playing, the cart wheel breaks. Okay, and Papa Bear comes hearing the sound. He says, what is happening here? So, Pini becomes a little worried. Mm -hmm. Tries to hide behind the cart. Mm -hmm. and but Papa still finds out. Mm -hmm. And says, you have broken the cart. What have you done? Mm -hmm. So Mini becomes very quiet mm -hmm. and it tries to hide mm -hmm. and then it runs to okay. Mama. Right. Mama, 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 see, see, everybody is scolding me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then what happens to us? Why are you scolding Mini? Mm -hmm. Please don't scold Mini like this. Mm -hmm. How is Mini feeling right now? Minnie is feeling angry and sad with mm -hmm. the father. Why is father trying to stop Minnie from playing? Mm -hmm. So she feels she hugs Mama from mm -hmm. behind, you know, and 
stands like this. Right. And Papa just goes. Okay. Angry. Papa goes. Okay. Angry. And, yeah. And then and Bunty. Bunty. Papa just takes Bunty on lap. It's okay. okay. I'll give you another toy. Don't worry. All right. And what happens next? Well, then uh, Mama comes down. Don't mm -hmm. worry. It's okay. You mm -hmm. know, next time you should be careful. Don't break the cart, you know. Right. Next time will you play safely? Yes, I will. And it goes away. Okay. Back to the cart. So how is Meenie feeling now? Slightly better, but still thinking about what Papa said. Okay. okay. And waiting for more play. Waiting for more play. Yes. So after some time, Bunty joins Minnie and Minnie and Bunty yeah. go on a long walk in the woods. Yeah. They go on a long walk in the woods yeah. and just as they are walking, yeah. Bunty falls down and hurts herself. Oh, Minnie then sees what happens. Did you, did you hurt yourself? Are you feeling hurt? Yes, and Minnie is rolling and crying and Bunty is rolling, rolling and crying and Minnie becomes scared. And Bunty can't walk. Yes. So what do you think Minnie does? They are quite far away from where Mama and Papa Bear are. So Minnie tries to pick up Bunty but then Bunty is a little difficult to carry. Mm -hmm. so Minnie is now worried and stuck. Mm -hmm. So Minnie can't leave Bunty there but still calls out, starts shouting, Mama, 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 please come, please come. Does Mama hear? Yes, after a while Mama is seen looking far from there and Minnie feels okay. ready. Mama see and Bunty is still crying. Minnie is trying to. Sort of okay. And mama then? Mama see this, you know, and then Mama comes and then Mama is angry with Minnie. Angry why? with Minnie? Ma I'm sorry, Bunty, you know. Mm -hmm. Why have you, why are you not careful? I've told you several times, mm -hmm. you know, not to fall like this. And every time you do this, mm -hmm. show me, look at this. Mama carries Minnie, Bunty. a Bunty and Minnie's, Minnie's mama tries to say, Minnie, you should have been careful. You should have also helped. Right. And then they go back. Okay. Mama takes. Okay. Then Papa sees them. Yeah. Oh, see, look what I said. Right. And Papa says, Minnie, you must have been careful. You must have pushed her. Mm -hmm. you know? And then again, Minnie is sad. Papa takes. Bunty dresses her wound. Mm -hmm. Mama also brings some things. Right. They take care of Bunty. And Minnie, how is Minnie feeling now? Minnie is more sad. Very sad. Very, very sad. What is Minnie and doing now? Minnie begins to cry. Minnie Not. begins to cry. Yeah. Yeah. Now, in a little while, Mama is picking flowers at the trees. And Minnie wants to play ball with Mama. Yeah. And Mama is picking flowers. Yeah. So Minnie comes to Mama yeah. saying, I want to play ball. I want to play ball. Okay. What do you think happens next? Minnie is calling Mama, but Mama can't hear from this so long. So Minnie calls, calls, and then finally. Here is the ball. Minnie finds the ball. And she wants to play ball with Mama, but Mama is busy picking flowers. Yeah. So Minnie rushes still. Mama is walking away and if like rushes behind her. Right. And finally Mama spots Minnie. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Minnie says, Mama, I want to play with ball with you. Mama turns around and says, Minnie, this is not the time to play. I've mm -hmm. told you. Can I play with you later? Mm -hmm. No, no, now I want to play. And Mama is angry and says, mm -hmm. no, now I cannot play. And Mama says, you go back, mm -hmm. I will pick flowers and then come back later and play with you. Okay. Again, Minnie goes back sad. 
sad so I mean, is really sad yes more sad yeah and he mama feels, continues to pick flowers yes and what he happens feels, next many feels oh i don't have anyone no one understands i should find i, I i'd rather play by myself i'm mm-hmm. still feeling sad mm-hmm. trying to then the ball also you know goes far away we right. can't find the ball and he is really sad oh and so what does alone. mini do next mini then just thinks okay let me go out and find some friends okay to my can maybe talk all right okay. and then in the meantime mama and papa call mini and bunty and lay out the picnic table there is some juice and everyone wants to have juice everyone is Thirsty. Here is some juice. Papa and Mama, and Mini and Bunty, yeah. and Mama is going to pour out juice. But Mini is so thirsty that she tries to grab the juice and she spills all the juice on the mat. What do you think happens next? Mini is just scared. Mm-hmm. and papa suddenly comes again mm-hmm. look mini what have you done you mm-hmm. f- finished all the juice now what do we drink now mm-hmm. mama is like also quiet mm-hmm. and then papa just comes closer and what just gives her a you know on tight he don't you know uh-huh. mini is sad and mm-hmm. mini starts crying then mm-hmm. spills the food all over here you know mm-hmm. and then you know uh, bunty goes minni mm-hmm. minni don't worry mm-hmm. then mama says why are you why did you hit her mm-hmm. why can how do you do this she small you should have understood and then they start arguing minni becomes more afraid and bunty is also starts crying then one bunty cries see stop crying bunty come to me and they just go away Mm-hmm. and then mama comes and says mini you should have been careful right and what happens because everyone is thirsty remember so then, everyone wants to have juice but all the juice is spilt then um, mama goes looks for something and tells papa can you buy some juice something and come mm-hmm. and papa goes out picks some food and brings again Mini refuses to eat. Okay. And, and Mama comes to try and say eat it. Yeah. Bunty comes later with a plate of food to Mini. Right. And then okay. Mama goes to Papa and mm-hmm. says, "Please ask Mini to eat. Mini mm-hmm. is sad." Mm. Mm-hmm. Papa says she's always doing the same mistake. How many times do I tell her? Mm. Mm-hmm. Then Papa comes. Mini, come and just eat the food. Hmm. And then Mini says, Mini becomes more afraid and just picks one small piece eats and go goes back to sleep. And she just sleeps. Oh. Yeah. So she goes to sleep. Yeah. And what happens to Bunty, Mama, and Papa? So Bunty again, Papa brings some food and Bunty is feels hungry. Yes. Mm-hmm. He's very happy. He's got pizza and you know oh. his favorite food. So mm-hmm. he's very happy is eating all of it. Right. And uh, mama also says I eat later. Mhm. Papa eats. Mama also does goes for some work. So Mini goes to sleep without food, is that right? Yes. Okay. All right. And how did Mini feel when she was scolded by Papa and she went to sleep without food? How did she feel then? She felt very very angry with Papa and feels that Papa doesn't love Mini. Mhm. Feels very angry that and feels so upset that Mini is continues to feel right. angry and wants to fight. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So now what happens is the next day the bear family have come home 
Okay. All right. Okay. And the next day is a school day. Okay. It's time to go to school. Okay. So there is mini bear mm. and mama bear. Yeah. And mama is trying to send mini bear to school. It's the first day of school. Yeah. And mini goes on a school bus. So here is Mama Bear and Mini Bear at the school bus stop and the bus arrives okay. and Mini has to get onto the bus to go to school. What do you think happens between Mama Bear and Mini when the school bus arrives? Mama Bear says, be a good girl, mm -hmm. have a good time in school, enjoy. Mm -hmm. And Minnie looks at Mama, Minnie looks around. Mm -hmm. She's a little afraid because there are who is going to be there. Mm -hmm. So then she looks back at Mama again. Mm -hmm. Mama said, Don't worry, you have a good day. Okay. So Minnie thanks Mama. Mama hugs Minnie. Mm -hmm. And she sets off the bus. Bus comes. Mama says, oh, that is your friend. And then Minnie looks at that, yes, my friend. Hey, and Minnie happily hops onto the bus. Okay, because how is Minnie feeling now? Little better because then she's found Golu. Right. Was a friend, you know. Okay. So, she's happy to be, and okay. she finds, she tries to sit here, Golu. Right. And they sit together, okay. and they share their bag, they show their new bag, uh -huh. their water bottle. And they're very happy. Okay. So they're yeah. very happy. They were going. She's to the bus. yeah. So Minnie has had a nice day at school, and yeah. she comes back home, and it's evening time. Okay. And suddenly, Mama and Papa Bear realize there are no vegetables in the house. Okay. So they tell Minnie and Bunty that we are going to get some vegetables. You be good children till we buy the vegetables and come and they go off to the market. Okay. Minnie and Bunty are all by themselves. Okay. As the evening goes by, both of them feel very hungry. Okay. But there's nothing in the house to eat. Okay. What do you think Minnie Bear does now? So, Mini is feeling hungry. Panti says, Mini, I'm hungry. Right. And <coughs> I'm also hungry. Mm. Mini says, Where is Papa? Where is Papa? Mini says, They both are coming. Mm. They both are coming with lots of food. See, mm. they promised us good food. They're bringing. Right. So, they are relaxing, they are right. thinking, okay, let us play some game. Right. Panty says, Minnie says, no, I am no mood to play now with you. How is Minnie feeling now? Minnie is thinking, where is Mama? Where is Mama? They are right. taking too long. Okay. And suddenly, far away, Minnie sees a shadow okay. of someone coming. It is one of the parents. Who is coming? Who is coming back? Mini comes. Looks like it's the mother who has come first. Okay, Mama Bear comes back. And where is Papa Bear? Oh, Mini asks Mama, where is Papa Bear? Then Mama says, Papa Bear has got some more work to do, so we will come back a little later. Okay. Okay. So then what happens next? Mama, so what have you brought for us? What did you get? Mm -hmm. so Mama says, we got few things for you. Okay. So show me, show me what you've got. Right. Look at, oh, you have got this. Mm -hmm. I wanted, not want this. This is, oh yeah, but you have got this one. Okay. But I still wanted the other food that you promised me. Mm -hmm. You said you'll get me a burger. Mm -hmm. 
No, but today I didn't have so much money to get the burger. But you promised you'll get me. I was waiting for it. And then Mama Bess tasted it. It might be good. Why don't you eat it? Right. So then Bunty comes. Oh, Bunty is very happy. It got its favorite food. Mm -hmm. And then both the three of them sit together and eat. Right. And then Bunty still looks, where is Papa? Right. And then Papa Bear comes also. Oh, then Bunty goes and jumps and hugs Papa. Right. Yeah. 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 And she's very happy and Papa is also very happy. And all of them have eaten? Papa hasn't eaten. Papa asked for food. Right. Mama says, it's in the kitchen. We've kept for you. Why don't you heat it and have it? Okay. We are all going to sleep. Okay. So Papa Bear has his food and he comes back and all of them go to sleep. Yeah. And how is Minnie feeling now? Minnie is going, okay, packing her bags for tomorrow yeah. before she goes to sleep. She's thinking about school and studying and thinking about her friends. Right. But she wants to play at school. Yeah. And Mama Bear tells her, Minnie, now it's time to go to sleep. Mama, please tell me a story. I'm not able to sleep. Then, so Mama Bear tells her a story. Yes. And then... And? Minnie falls asleep. Yeah. And then Mama Bear goes back right. and sleeps. Okay. All right. So how did you like the story? Very nice. You enjoyed? Yes, I really yeah. enjoyed it. Was that really a long story? It is. It was a very long story. You enjoyed yes. the picnic? The yes. teddy bear's picnic? Yes, I did. Yeah. Thank you so much, Gayatri, for participating. Sure. Thank you. We saw from the demonstration of a play session of the teddy bear's picnic uh, uh, were several things actually. Uh, we saw whether the main character values herself or not. Uh, we saw relationships coming out very strongly. The kind of relationship that the main character shared with the mother and the father as well as the younger sibling. So we saw um, uh, on quite a few occasions that Mini Bear felt very sad, upset, hurt, uh, angry. There was an expression, even a verbal expression of these emotions uh, by the six-year-old. Uh, so the teddy bear picnic is uh, quite, quite uh, revealing in a manner of speaking uh, to help us understand uh, the children's world, the reality in the children's world and what we cannot see from the clinical space but the child has really reconstructed her relationships in the real world, her feelings in the real world and that is what is for us to understand when we are using play and then based on this understanding and learning and analysis we decide how to work with the child but also with the parents and what is it that we need to work with the parents about to help the parents and help strengthen parenting so that the child feels capable and competent and self-confident because that's very important ingredient for growing up and good growing up. So that was your teddy bear's picnic. Similarly, we can use many different methodologies. This demonstration was of a clinical setting, but in a developmental setting, we can again use a whole lot of role plays, songs, drawing, painting, uh, storytelling, drama, um, puppetry. Uh, and use of puppets, not only for clinical. Uh, and all of these are, come under the larger umbrella of play. Uh, now, if we were to just look at what Landert said, he says, like birds fly, fish swim, children play. 
So play is really the most natural medium of self-expression for children. No one needs to tell children to play. Just like adults talk, children play. We need to tell children to actually study, but we never need to invite children to play. So play has been universally acknowledged as a mainstay method of working with children, both in clinical and the therapeutic settings. Broadly, like I said, the term play includes all the methods that I talked about, you know, including puppets and songs and storytelling and painting and drawing and art and um, music and role playing. And uh, these have uh, been used quite extensively across different settings. And although play has existed in all societies from times immemorial, the understanding of play particularly with emotionally disturbed children, was spearheaded by uh, Virginia, Virginia Axlein uh, around the 1940s. The child gardens movement in India over the last century has really relied heavily on the use of play and art forms and play therapy while dealing with children having emotional and behavior problems. Subsequently, however, play is no longer limited to the clinical setting and it has really moved out of the confines of the child guidance centers when organizations are working with children, not just through the child guidance clinic, but also through, uh, um, you know, many different contexts uh, apart from the clinical context. How is play defined? As early as 1903, Frobel defined play as an expression of the natural unfolding of the germinal leaves of childhood. And Seashore defines, in 1972, defines play as self-expression. For the pleasure of expression, really, play for just fun's sake. Children engage in play just for the sake of fun. And yet they learn a whole lot of things through that play. Uh, Shenama in 2012 summarizes play as an activity that is intrinsically motivated, freely chosen and enjoyable. In fact, Landerth, who is a renowned play therapist and a psychologist, asserts that because play is the child's natural medium of self-expression, it should be included as a form of communication used by children world over. Uh, so he says, play is language for children and we need to include that as a form of communication the world over. Uh, what are the values of play in a child's life? What does play teach children? Play teaches children from a very young age, ever since the child is a baby, an infant. The child's first contact perhaps begins, apart from the primary con uh, caretakers, begins with play material through exploration. The child really begins discovering objects and formulating concepts related to object permanence according to Piaget. It helps the child to bond with the primary caretakers we have often seen very young children hiding behind or, or you know the caretaker hiding behind someone and doing kuchiku, kuchiku and the child gurgling in laughter. Now these are all different ways in which children engage in discovering themselves, discovering others, discovering objects, understanding that while the adult is hiding behind another adult, when the adult reappears, I have to laugh. So the child learns responses. There are a whole lot of things that the child learns uh, starting from infancy. As children grow, children learn to learn walking, running, climbing, and playing in the playground. Through all of these skills, children's finer and gross motor skills develop whether it is swinging on the swings or uh, going up the, um, what is that 
called up the ladder and coming down um, or playing in the sand or playing ball and group games or individual games the child is learning the child is going through both cognitive physical physiological development as children grow older and begin to play group games uh, they also understand the rules of the game uh, whether it is hide and seek, uh, these are all unstructured games that I'm talking about and that are out of the confines of the clinical space. So children begin to play group games, children learn the rules of the game and thereby children also learn the rules of life. They know cheating is not okay and if you cheat in a game, what are the consequences and perhaps for this child, the consequences may be as harsh as taking, taking the den, say five times or ten times and no child wants to be the denner forever. Children also learn the importance of collaboration working together in groups, uh, collaborating with other people for the larger good of group goals and to be able to subjugate your own desires to work towards achieving group goals. So these are some of the things that uh, children learn. Again, as children grow up, uh, we see a lot of children engage in pretend play whether it is doctor, doctor, house, house, school, school. What are children learning here? Children are learning the rules. They are getting to practice social roles. House, house. Who plays the breadwinner? Who plays the homemaker? Who goes out and earns the bread? Who stays at home and cooks and cleans and serves food? Children are learning all of these roles. But more than roles, they are also learning the rules of the game. What are the rules around these social roles? And in fact, children learn very, very important th things. In, or in fact, all of life skills through play, whether it is empathy, communication, creative thinking, problem solving, conflict resolution, relationship, self-awareness, ability to build self-confidence, dealing with conflicting and ambiguous emotions. All of this is possible through play. And this play doesn't happen in the clinical space. This play happens in the larger developmental context as the child is growing up. The importance of harping on the developmental context is to say that today we are losing these spaces. We are losing, uh, children are not playing. Children are playing, oh sure, they are playing on their tablets, they are playing on, on their phones, they are playing video games. But group games like hide and seek and lagori or ball ball or all kinds of other games that perhaps my generation played, children don't even know the names of those games. And it's important for children, for us, anyone who's working in the field of mental health and with children, it's very important to create spaces to play, not just to heal, but to play so that children grow into sensitive, caring human beings, because play affords all of that. Uh, uh, there are other values of play that many important thinkers have uh, stressed upon. Um, for example, uh, play, uh, Piaget says that play leads to the emergence of new behaviors. You learn new behaviors, thereby increasing your feelings of mastery and control over the environment. And um, to, to, to an adult, children's play may seem like purposeless and even hedonistic uh, activity. And yet, play provides both a context for learning and learning from the experience itself. Uh, so, when I say context for learning, uh, when children are engaged in play, play becomes the context. But play also affords uh, children the opportunity for learning through, you know, like I talked about social roles and rules. 
um, and uh, and therefore uh, play is so important in uh, both therapeutic and developmental settings so those are the values of play in children's life that we saw uh, let's turn now to uh, the logic of play. What is the view of the personality? Many ego psychologists have said that all of us human beings have a very powerful force within each individual which strives for complete self-realization, a drive towards maturity, independence, self-direction. However, in order to achieve the self-realization and uh, uh, this maturity, we need a good growing ground for the development of uh, complete self-acceptance and also acceptance by others. Unless conditions are extremely adverse, children are quick to forget and forgive. Children are generally very accepting of life, manifesting a curiosity, a great love for life that thrills and delights in simple ways. Uh, and therefore, when there is relative satisfaction of these needs, basic needs, the individual is said to be adjusted. But when these basic needs are blocked through adverse uh, circumstances, whether it is through neglect or abuse or violence or a lot of trauma uh, happening at home, what happens? Growth does not stop. The child develops only devious ways to achieve the needs that is intrinsic to all of us and these devious ways become maladaptive, maladjusted coping patterns that the child resorts to. Uh, and yet personality seems to defy classification, stereotyping and compartmentalizing. So it's not necessary that when a person is fearful in one situation, the person is fearful in all situations. The person can be quite bold in another. And uh, uh, it takes a very, very long time. It takes many negative circumstances uh, to really uh, burden the child with uh, mental health problems, um, largely if the dynamics around the house and primary caretaking is good uh, and uh, meeting the child's basic needs, uh, the child is likely to develop uh, greater self-confidence and a love for life and not maladaptive patterns. Uh, and therefore, you, we must realize that all behaviors are driven by one drive, essentially one drive that is of complete self-realization. When this is blocked, there are pressures from the environment, growth continues in a negative manner. But when all our basic needs are fulfilled, growth is something that we would take joy in and uh, move towards self-realization. The more the child turns inwards, the further the child moves away from the world of uh, reality. Uh, now that is essentially a view of human personality and therefore what should play offer to children and what should, so from general play and play in developmental settings and what are the different ways in which we can use, we are now coming to play therapy and what uh, it is that uh, we can do with children who have uh, mental health problems. Again, play therapy is a very, like play is very natural, voluntary, non-task oriented activity. Play therapy also offers a child a space which is free from tension, judgment and scrutiny. It encourages the child's fantasy and symbolization. Um, in fact, inability to symbolize uh, is a sign of disturbance. So in the teddy bear's picnic, we just saw Gayatri um, very happily engaging in a make-belief world and uh, making up stories. And she, as a six-year-old, she made up very spontaneous stories. So while, of course, there were some negative emotions that we need to handle. Uh, largely, I would say this child is, uh, is, is a happy child. Uh, 
but in order that the child doesn't become disordered these negative emotions that were expressed through the teddy bears picnic need to be taken care of so what function does play therapy serve it serves a recapitulatory function that means it through repetition the child is able to absorb past experiences it also serves the anticipatory function where you can prepare a child through play for an for for entry into school for perhaps a surgery uh, uh, arrival of a new sibling change of a school change of a home change of a city bringing in a new pet in the house uh, a grandparents visit whatever so any anticipatory events the child can be prepared for these uh, events future events through the make believe world through the fantasy world uh, through creating anticipatory play perhaps the child herself will engage in anticipatory play when she knows of the arrival of a new sibling and she will show you demonstrate through her play her anxiety as well as her love about the arrival for her sibling so there can be contradictory ambiguous feelings that the child will express through these sessions and what play therapy needs to do is to hold the child through these ambiguous contradictory feelings without judgment with full acceptance and to let the child know that all human beings are capable of these contradictory and ambiguous feelings and it's okay to have these uh, that's when the child will begin to love herself and self accept herself and great, develop greater confidence but also be able to give that love to the new sibling uh, play therapy also serves a reparative or for example a repair kind of function um, so some anxiety arousing activities which have taken place in the past for example an accident or if there has been a riot that the child has witnessed um, the child may perhaps engage into that kind of play again and again and again um, just in order to get over the trauma of the uh riots um i remember um some students coming back from a right um right affected area and um, they reported that children who were witness to actual killing were very very traumatized very damaged uh they could sleep at night they woke up with uh cold sweats uh they woke up very scared they kept remembering and recalling the instances of mass killing uh and in the play sessions children played this out again and again and again till such time that the children could come to terms with the reality of this kind of a thing having happened in the past uh play therapy also serves the communication functions the child is able to communicate about his or her world to the therapist it's a means of understanding of mastering of clarifying one's position in relation to the world um it's also a make believe uh, world it's a world of fantasy that the child enters through this world of fantasy uh, the child is also able to engage in an adult world which would really take years for the child to actually in reality enter but when the child plays in a play therapy situation a teacher who is reprimanding the child uh the child is perhaps entering the school world and telling the therapist what happens on a regular basis um non directive let's come to non directive play therapy so this is play therapy essentially what functions it serves um non directive play therapy is really about allowing the child to lead the way uh a belief that the child can solve his or her problems a very very firm belief so the therapist is really there and the therapeutic space is really there only to 
hold and contain the child's emotions. Uh, it's not to pass judgment, it's not to interpret, it's not to analyze, uh, it's to accept. And non-directive play therapy really believes in the fact that children can find their own solutions and play facilitates in finding these solutions. Um, so, so I'm going to quickly run through some of these things or uh, some principles of non-directive play therapy that the child has the capacity to solve uh, his or her own problems satisfactorily, that there is a growth impulse in all of us that makes mature behavior more satisfying than immature behavior. Uh, non-directive play therapy really starts where the individual is. Uh, the child has the permissiveness to absolutely be, to be himself or herself without any rules, without any adult injunctions about what is okay, about what is not okay, about why you broke that toy and how you should order things around in the playroom. Uh, here is the therapist who accepts the child completely without uh, any evaluation. Uh, play on also allows for ventilation, relaxation, and reorganization. Yeah, so so uh, to continue, non-directive play therapy also offers a sense of security and a reality, a reality testing for the child. Uh, uh, for the child, it is a challenge to self-realization. For the therapist, it is an op opportunity to test out hypotheses about the child's world uh, and giving the child a chance to become more mature, more positive, more constructive. Uh, play material is essentially a tool of self-expression and therefore the choice of play material becomes very important in non-directive play therapy. We must use as much unstructured play materials such as sand and uh, water um, as possible but also use of puppets and animal puppets and family puppets and a whole lot of other drawing painting self-expression uh, games. Uh, play therapy offers, non-directed play therapy offers uh, a chance to test out personal relationships. Um, so there are a whole lot of things that uh, non-directive play therapy uh, is based on the principles but as well as what it offers. Let's come to, let's quickly distinguish between the play of well-adjusted children and play of disturbed children. Uh, when a child approaches you, a well-adjusted child approaches you or sees all of these chai, uh, 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 play materials, the child will approach with a sense of wonderment, uh, with wanting to explore, uh, with wanting to try out things. Uh, there is a certain amount of joy. Uh, the ch this child is not inhibited. This child also enjoys company. This child is able to build a relationship with you uh, quite easily. Uh, on the other hand, play of disturbed children uh, will be uh, inhibited. They will have an intense fear of separation from the caretaker. So they will, if they have come to the play space or any space with the primary caretaker, they may not want to leave. They may be fearful if the caretaker is sitting outside constantly looking over the shoulder to check if the if mama is still there uh, or she's gone and left me and abandoned me and these are feelings that are inherent that that are there in the child because perhaps the child has experienced this in the past and the child has no confidence in himself or herself but the child also has no confidence in the caretaker and that's the hallmark of a, a, a maladjusted or disturbed uh, child on the other hand you will also so you will see inhibition but you will also see over aggression you will see hoarding you will see domination you will see inability to share in children who uh, are disturbed uh, sometimes children come uh, to the clinical space with brain damage and uh, what are the signs where you need to recognize that there may be brain damage, there is poor motor control, there is hyperactivity, there is insistence on sameness, there is an inability to shift from one play or one toy to another and there is an overreaction. So, so for example something breaks and a child who is well adjusted will say sorry, will apologize, will feel bad for a while. 
but be able to move on. A child with uh, a manifestation of brain damage may overreact to breakage or may overreact to saying that, well, now the time is up and you need to go. Um, what are the kind of play therapy uh, um, uh, toys that we should use actually in therapy, uh, toys that facilitate the establishment of a relationship, toys that allow for an emotional expression or catharsis as we say, <coughs> toys that aid development of insight, uh, toys that provide an opportunity for reality testing. So if we are looking at relationships at home, we need to create an atmosphere, a home-like atmosphere through your play materials. Um, what, what are the uses of play? Play helps ventilation, it helps to bind anxiety, it helps to work through conflicts, uh, it facilitates uh, uh, communication and it helps develop skills that enhance self-esteem. When is play not therapeutic? When play is an expression of age-appropriate interests? You see children engaged in play. That's not therapeutic play, that's learning play. That's a context for play, but also a context for learning, okay? When play is overly guilt producing or anxiety creating, that time you need to not engage children in play. Uh, when play is used as a resistance to treatment or to avoid active involvement in therapy. So to sum up, we saw uh, Play itself has a great potential for use in developmental as well as therapeutic settings. All of us are engaged in life skills. Uh, when I, in the earlier part of this uh, session, I talked about role plays and games and uh, storytelling uh, and a whole lot of methodologies uh, that can be used actually to teach life skills. We can use drama, we can use songs. Uh, so we saw through this module that play has a great scope for use both in developmental and therapeutic settings. And um, within therapeutic settings, uh, we usually engage in play and play related activities with children up to about 13 or 14. Because like Landert says, play is the natural form of communication for children. And therefore, um, if we want to understand children's world, we need to understand children's play. Uh, I would urge all of you to be playful and to engage in play uh, in order to understand children's worlds. Uh, there are some resources that you, that you can use. Uh, at the end of the module, I have cited some resources, but uh, there is this book, which is almost a recent publication, published in 2012. It covers different contexts. So, for example, how do you work with riot-affected children, or how do you work with children uh, who are going through a bereavement and loss? How do you work with children in conflict situations? How do you conduct research with children using play and art forms? Uh, how do you work with children to sensitize children around gender and violence? So some of these topics are covered in this book on play. It's titled Exper Play, Experiential Methodologies in Developmental and Therapeutic Settings. It's edited by me. Shubhada Maitra and Professor Shekhar Seshadri, uh, Professor and Head, Department of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, NIMHANS. Uh, this will be a good uh, beginning resource for uh, starters. Thank you so much.